Hello, my name is Karol Gugawa, I'm from Unmicro, and today I would like to tell a few words about building an open source system Verilog ecosystem. Uh, here on Micro, we deliver services uh, spanning from hardware design, software running on this hardware, controlling this hardware, uh, through FPGA, IP and ASIC designs, uh, ending on tools, uh, improving, um, improving development and testing and enhancing uh, the whole design flow. In today's talk, I will focus on the tools part, especially on open source, system very lock oriented, system very lock related um, tooling um, that we use in, in, our, uh, in our flows. Um, why do we actually need a system, open source system <clears throat> very lock support? First of all, proprietary tools that are already available on the market, uh, they licensing actually prevent us from using those tools in uh, widely, um, using this, those tools widely in uh, continuous integration system, especially uh, publicly available continuous integration systems. Um, also, there is a number of open source RISC-V cores and IPs around those cores uh, that if we want to use them, we need to use proprietary tools. So we have open source designs, but we cannot use uh, open source tools to build them. Also, um, we have uh, a number of, of very good open source design verification tools, but without open source tooling to run them, we cannot really integrate them in, in publicly available and widespread uh, continuous integration systems. Uh, but how to build an open source system Verilog ecosystem? So first of all, we need to identify what is already there. What do we have? What we can actually support with existing open source tooling. Then um, reuse what we can. Do not you know, reinvent the view, the wheel. Um, just uh, extend what is already there. Um, for, uh, create a well-documented, easily uh, transport project, uh, projects. By transport, I mean uh, with publicly available CIs that everyone can see and everyone can check uh, what works, what doesn't. And do not do something that is not really required by the people. Talk with other users, talk with other uh, players in the market and, and uh, cooperate, create what is actually needed. <clears throat> what does it mean uh, when we talk about creating system Velox support in, in various tools? There are two main parts. First of all, we need to parse language. So we need to have a very good parser um, and we need to support system Velox syntax. This task is, I would say, pretty straightforward. Um, there is a spec um, saying what should be passed, how we should uh, process the language, and what should we create uh, from this language. That's pretty straightforward, it just requires some work. Uh, the other, uh, a little bit more complicated part, is actually supporting functionalities delivered by System Verilog. And those are, for example, uh, constraint random, uh, which is not um, available in the regular Verilog, in the older spec, uh, this classes support, or a scheduler that uh, we need to follow to, to uh, process the, um, the design correctly or the test, des uh, the test uh, design correctly. Um, <clears throat> so, as I said at the beginning, um, first step of creating a system Verilog uh, open source system Verilog ecosystem is identifying what is already there. To do that, along with Google, we created a system Verilog compliance suite. This is an open source product available on GitHub. It basically uh, checks number of, of uh, open source tools and gathers the results uh, of support level for system Verilog features uh, in a easily to browse, um, easy to browse uh, web page. This web page is, is automatically deployed to GitHub pages, so if you are interested uh, in a support level in, in a certain tool, uh, please go to the website and check it by yourself. Um, what does the, um, the compliance suite actually uh, do? Uh, so it runs a number of tests against uh, various open source tools. Uh, the test spans from um, a simple unit test, testing a, a certain system Verilog feature up to complicated designs like SOCs or CPUs. <clears throat> um, as I said at the very beginning, um, one of the key requirements of creating the open source uh, ecosystem is to uh, 
figuring out what is actually needed. And one of the uh, requirements from, from the community was to have a, a very good uh, open source system verlog linter and formatter. Uh, this is required to track the quality of the code in in multi uh, organization project and uh, one of those uh, projects one of the very very good project that, that uh, supports uh, most of the system verlog features is a variable this is a google's uh, google's project open sourced uh, quite some time ago and right now together with google we actively contribute to this project we actively develop it to to uh, to to uh, updated with, with all the features that are required by the community. Um, the next thing required uh, to have a very, very good um, open source uh, ecosystem, open source system, the local ecosystem, is having good parser. Um, and example of a very good parser, very complete parser, is a shoe lock. Uh, shoe lock, if you look at the, at the system veloc test suite, shoe lock's column is mostly green. Uh, Shilok has one very uh, one additional uh, pretty nice feature. It's UHDM integration. UHDM is a universal hardware data model. Uh, this is a standard used for pr uh, passing the information from the parser to any other tool. Uh, if you want to know more details about that, you can check this year's WASET presentation from Alan, original author of uh, Shilok in UHDM. But having just a parser is not enough. So uh, together with Google, we actually uh, work on integrating Shulog via UHDM with various open source tools uh, for synthesis or, uh, or uh, simulation. And long ago for, for, this, uh, uh, for this feature is to uh, integrate, is to create a generic parser library that can be used with various uh, Various projects, basically, to, to use any front-end parser, create a HDM description of, of a design, and then pass it to any tool in the end, including a synthesis tool, including um, uh, simulation tools, and any other that we can actually think of. So, right now, we actively develop um, Yosis uh, and and the later support, but in the future, we'll probably uh, add some more. Um, Yet another uh, feature required by the community is a UVM methodology uh, support in open source tooling. To address this need, uh, we with Western Digital actively work on adding uh, system verlog features required to support UVM uh, into Verilator, an open source uh, verlog simulator. Uh, this year's uh, work focused on implementing a stratified scheduler required for running uh, UVM uh, simulations, uh, adding randomized methods uh, widely used in UVM uh, simulation for, for coverage testing and, and uh, for running different, uh, different test cases, and extending existing class support in, in the later. Uh, Later, we'll, we'll focus on adding the rest uh, of the of those uh, of the required features. So, summing it up, how and micro helps uh, building an open source system verlog ecosystem. So, first of all, we created um, along with Google um, system verlog test suite that anyone can use to check uh, the, su the support level of in the existing tools. Um, also, we extend the existing tools. Uh, to to fill the needs of the community, fill the needs of uh, of, of other projects, real world scenarios uh, that are there, and also we create uh, scalable, reusable solutions for future developments. Uh, this one, as I presented, UHDM integration and then uh, should look parser. Um, if you feel that we can help you uh, to create to make your product better, to make your development better, or to um, extend certain tools to uh, fill your requirements, please don't hesitate to contact us as, at contact at microcom and we could discuss uh, further details. Thank you for your attention.